old people that function okay or function even better than okay are left out for decades. So he's saying, okay, we should also, also look at who's doing okay and who's even doing better than okay. Who's, who are those people who function optimal, in an opt optimal way? And what can we learn from that and use that for the people who need it, who need our attention in psychiatric, psychiatric uh, wards and in therapy and in coaching and things like that. So looking at the other ways. So that means that in order for positive psychology, we have to reverse the total connected to positive. Well, that sounds familiar really to you, of course. Uh, develop a language of strengths. Well, you know, uh, Michael Seligman, is, you have the, the DSM uh, criteria, psychiatric criteria. The DSM, probably, you know that. You know when you when you have uh, obsessive compulsive disorders or when you have uh, psychosis. Well, it's all there. And Seligman is making uh, the same list but of, of strengths. So uh, it's the DSM thing, looking at what's wrong with you, and he's looking at what's what's right with you. It's about building, noticing, and honestly, positive emotions, and it's about building strategies of hope and optimal performance. This can be in sports, this can be in, 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 in any part of life, of course. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Next one. Next one. So let me talk just a little bit about hope theory. If you Google on hope theory, you can go on for days. <laughs> but just in a nutshell, um, Schneider, who did lots, 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 lots of research on, on hope theory and, 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 and uh, looking at high hope people compared to low hope people and what they do differently. He said, hope is like a journey. You need three things. You need a destination, a goal. You need a roadmap. And you need a means of transportation. And this is, when you compare it to SF, we all know the goal, looking for the goal. This can be the, one, uh, the, the, the miracle question, but can be, what would you like to have instead of your problem? Anything that is the goal. Then there's roadmap. And the roadmap consists of steps already taken and steps still to be taken, reaching, going in the direction of your goal. And the means of transportation is the person itself. Who is going to do it? Who is motivated to take these steps? Because, like Aristotle already said, you can have a goal, but if there's no strive to reach the goal, then there's no use of the goal. Because somebody has to do something. So how to motivate clients to take those steps along the roadmap to find their destination? So, that's basically, I think, uh, I have four solutions. Well, I, I, I wrote a book with thousand and one solution focus questions, but I have one with four solution focus questions, and I think you can completely uh, uh, have a conversation with four solution focus questions. Well, the first one is what, what are your best hopes? The second one being what difference would that make? The third one being what's already working in the right direction? And the last one being what would be your next time of progress? Or what would be your next step? And with only these four steps, you can just um, have any form of solution for the sort of thing. And it's based on the whole theory as well, because I'm explicitly asking about what I am hoping for. So this is one thing uh, in which I think uh, whole theory and SF are combined in a very nice way. Is that clear? The other thing, but what's more to say, the other thing I would like to talk just a little bit about is the stretch goal. The stretch goal is also from the whole theory, and the stretch goal is like this. People come with a problem or a conflict or whatever, and they want to move away from the problem or the conflict, whether it be in coaching or mediation or psychotherapy, whatever. They want to move away from the place they don't want to be in. Yeah? Can you all see it? Yes? Okay, so then at one point, um, most problem-focused conversations are about this. 
getting less of what you don't want. So if somebody comes to you and say, I'm depressed, you will say, okay, I want, I'd like to be less depressed. Or I would like to have less conflict with my colleagues or whatever. So then at one point, you may say, okay, there's a resolution of the problem or the conflict. So the conflict is over. But that doesn't do anything for a better relationship. So a stretch goal is a goal where you go beyond less of what you don't want, and you go to what you do want. So this is the preferred future, so to speak, or maybe the miracle if you use if you use a miracle. I never use a miracle question, but the preferred future. What would you like to have instead of the problem or the conflict? And this is about. It's not about resolution, but this is about transformation. So being a mediator, I don't write about conflict resolution, because I think there's more. This is conflict resolution. This is conflict transformation. And it's a big difference, because in this part, it's well-being. So I think stretch goal, we, in solution-focused work, we already use these stretch goals. Because what we do, we say, what would you like to have instead of the problems or the conflict? And it's more than just the fact that the conflict is gone or the problem is gone. And I think if, for instance, uh, you have two neighbors, let's say you have a conflict uh, uh, in the same house or living next to each other, if you only resolve the conflict, chances are quite, quite high that it not so much does have to happen before the next conflict starts. Whereas uh, when you have a good relationship, or a good, a good, a good working relationship, chances are less that the next problem or conflict will start. So in order to maintain, maintain a positive relationship, I think it's important to go beyond just the resolution of the problem or the conflict. Could you, could you say that um, resolution of the problem or the conflict would be like a zero when you start with a problem, let's say, or below, below zero, let's say minus five, and then you go to zero, which is resolution of the problem, and then you start really to have the well-being zone and go until 10? Yeah, you can, yeah, of course you can, you can do that, yeah, sure. Yeah. Because I've always, you can, Right here, when there's a problem or a conflict, it's, here you have the choice to do something about it or, or you don't. And here you have the choice to leave it at that or go beyond that yeah. into a more positive situation. Mm -hmm. So this is the concept of a stretch goal. And I think this is what we do in it. Because we do ask what we like to have uh, may I ask, what would be the stretch goal if somebody said, I want to have a better relationship with this person? That, that is already the positive. It, it is a stretch. Yeah. If, if you say, I don't want, I don't want uh, that many calls with my partner, for instance. So there is less of what you don't want. And this is more of what you do want. And I think that's a big difference. So for instance, people will say, oh, for instance, uh, people say, okay, um, I would like to quit smoking. So what would be a stretch goal then? I would live, like to live in a healthy way. Yeah, sure. Sure. And that's much more than just quitting smoking. And the other thing is, if you, if you, if you reach the healthy life, uh, uh, quitting smoking becomes much easier. Well, if you haven't already done that. Yeah, sure. And it has to be related to the person. Not like uh, Olympia said to to the other one. Like I, I want to have a better relationship because it is something that you cannot control. Mm -hmm. You can control what you are doing, mm -hmm. but you cannot control the other person. No, you're right. So but then if, if you, you change, say if you relate your goal changes. to somebody else, it's hard to achieve it, even if it's meaningful. Yeah, but then you can say, okay, what would it look like if you have a That's better relationship? Difference. What would you do differently that you're doing now? Yeah. What, what would you, you use? Do? What would be your next step? Exactly. You, not the other person. Yeah, and what difference would it make for the other one? And then... And that's the consequence. Yeah, that's the consequence. You cannot focus on that. No, but you focus, of course, well, who's the, who's the, who's the means of transportation? That's the one in the room. 
And what would, would be your next sign of progress? Or what would you do different? What would you be your next test?